because I read a piece from The Federalist. I really, really encourage you guys to check it out. It's titled, One Year Later, Our Answer to Lockdowns Must Be Never Again. I will probably read the full piece in the next segment, but I'm lucky enough to be joined by David Marcus from The Federalist, who wrote this piece. David, thank you very much for joining the show. Thanks for having me, Grace. The first thing I want to talk about, and the reason that this piece really stuck out to me, because I mean, and you know this, David, there's thousands of you know, think pieces on the virus. But something you said that I don't think a lot of people are confident enough or courageous enough to write is that you said we need to start addressing the fact that much of this has been a big mistake. Yeah, I I mean, absolutely. Uh, You know, I've covered this story from the beginning. And, you know, I'm old enough to remember when Ron DeSantis uh, governor of Florida and, and, and Kemp, the governor of Georgia, back in April, uh, were accused by the Atlantic magazine of engaging in human sacrifice by opening their states. And we were promised that I, it was going to be it was going to be absolute death and devastation. And two weeks later, it wasn't. And they said, well, wait two more weeks. So we waited two more weeks. Two more weeks. It wasn't. Two more weeks after that. And now it's absolutely clear um, that these states have at least as good a public health record, if not better, without having imposed the economic deprivation on their citizens that were imposed in in places like New York and and California. I don't know exactly what the situation uh, was in Boston, but I know, you know, I I know you guys had some of it, too. Yeah. And there's there's no way to look at this anymore as a rational person and say these lockdowns made any sense and we need to come to terms with that. Yeah, and I'm going to read part of this paragraph here because this is what really stood out to me. You said, the only thing worse than being in prison is being in prison for a crime you did not commit. To realize that all of the missed weddings and funerals and concerts and gatherings and ball games and school plays and proms and even the touch of human skin were a mistake is painful. And I think that that's a big part of this problem is that people, rather than facing that and saying a lot of this didn't have to happen, they're just doubling down and they're they're trying to make themselves feel better about all of this damage they've caused. It's look. It, it it's very hard. I mean, we've all had friends uh, who became extremely invested in this, not just as a matter of public health, but quite frankly, as a moral issue. Right in the earliest days of this pandemic, to even suggest slightly that closing schools and and closing restaurants and closing businesses might not be the right thing to do, brought down utter moral approbation. I mean, you were literally accused of, of wanting to kill grandma, yeah. right? And, and, and when, when people invest themselves so deeply in an idea like that, when people invest themselves in the idea that I'm wearing this mask and that makes me a good person, you know, whatever it is, it's very hard to walk that back. And I'm concerned that we're not going to be able to do it as a society. And, and, and one thing that I, do think that, has, that I do think has to happen is there has to be some generosity of spirit from people who did question this to allow for the fact that, that people were, were really gaslighted. Um, yeah. and, and not to treat them like idiots, but, but to treat them like people who were genuinely concerned and trying to do the right thing. Yeah, and, and I think, David, too, uh, and you, you touch on this a little bit, is that people were... People were shamed and it was it, people were made to feel like if they did question it, they were bad people or they didn't care about people. And that's a really easy way to gaslight people is to make them feel like if they disagree, then morally they are not on the same page as everyone else. And so I agree with you. I think it's easy for people to say, oh, God, this is the all so dumb and this clearly didn't make any sense. But like you said, a lot of people were just worried that they were going to appear selfish or careless if they didn't follow the rules. Yeah, I mean, look, that that's absolutely true. I mean, one of the most, and and it got so strange. One of the one of the moments when I realized just how weird this had gotten was on Halloween, right? And I have a ten year old son, and I had picked him up from his piano lesson, and we were walking back home, and there wasn't trick or treating in Brooklyn, right? Like he wasn't going to go out in a costume and trick or treat. Some people had put like bowls of candy out, which was mm-hmm. great. 
Um, but my son said to me, you know, Dad, it sucks that, like, there's no trick-or-treating this year. And I said, yeah, you know, it does suck. And, and I hope next year that, like, that won't be the case. So I, 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 I just put on Facebook, uh, you know, hey, you know, my son said this, and it really kind of hit me. And I was hit with this cavalcade of, like, Dave, why do you always make this sound worse than it is? <laughs> what, you know, why, why do you always make this? And I'm like, whoa, guys, this is a 10-year-old kid who misses trick-or-treating right. that you're reacting to here. And, and it, really, it, it really crystallized in my mind just how almost religious all of this had become to people. And, and that's a really difficult thing to unwind. Right. And, and I agree with you. And, and there's something to be said for, you know, people make sacrifices. But part of what you said about the prison is, is what I think people relate to, because it's not now. Now I'm going to I don't want to make this about me, David. And, I, and I'm self-pity is not good box office. I learned that from my boss. But what I will say is when you talk about people missing weddings, I my wedding was postponed. Like like I said a million times, that's OK. That's not the end of the world. I will survive. But the further out I get from it, I think, did it really have to be like, did that was it's not so much that it's something extremely painful or extremely sad, but it's just kind of an unnecessary delay of life that I don't feel really had to happen. And when I when you talk about your son, it's like you're not saying that the world is falling apart because your son didn't get to go trick or treating. But you're kind of saying, why doesn't he like, why are we taking this away if it's not really going to make a difference? Yeah, and, and listen, I don't think, you know, I, I, I think in retrospect, like, your wedding probably shouldn't have been delayed and that you have every right to, to, to you know, be annoyed at that. I, you know, I, I, I've described this experience as being kind of like a pointillist painting, right? For, for those who don't know, these are guys like Surratt, right? And they do, like, little dots. And if you look really close, uh, it, just look like, it just looks like dots. But when you step back, it's suddenly a landscape, Right. right. We were told that everything was a small sacrifice. Okay, you can't have your wedding. Okay, you have to wear a mask. Okay, you can't go to a baseball game. Okay, you can't go to the movies. Okay, you can't have, you know, all of these things. And yes, absolutely. Individually, all of these things were very small little things you could argue. You put them all together and suddenly you have a landscape. And that landscape does look very much like a prison. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, this was not done by normal political processes. This was not done by state legislatures. This was done by governors who were given dictatorial emergency powers and have had them for nearly a year. It's, it's absolutely frightening. Amer- this is unprecedented. Uh, Americans have never been governed this way before. I don't even know if we can use the, world, the word governed. I mean, it, it, it sounds a lot more like the word ruled. Yeah, and and I'm talking to David Marcus from The Federalist. I, I love that analogy. I think that's actually very true because as someone who's, I keep saying, and I know it's not a big deal, and I know it's not, you know, the world's not ending, but the, you start to say that enough and you're kind of like, well, why can't I feel this way? Like, why can't I feel like I got screwed and other people got screwed and we're annoyed of it? Why can't I feel annoyed that kids are sitting at home learning on a computer screen instead of being in school? Um, but David, I, I do want to ask you one more thing here because... You said uh, about this that we are kind of stuck in these cages that we've built. And you said it gets harder and harder to slip them off as time goes by. Like you can't just we're not going to be able to just slip out of this back into our normal lives. We have to destroy these cages. And as much as I understood what you meant, what can people do? Because sometimes I talk to people and they go, listen, Grace, I'm just as frustrated as you are. But you get to talk about it for three hours a day and I have to go to work. So what can I do to really like make a stand and try to fight back against this control they seem to have over us? Look, the, the best case scenario of this situation, and it's bad, it's really bad, is that a lot of this was just cynical electoral politics trying to hurt Donald Trump and Republicans. And, and, and there was a lot of that, right? That, right. That, that's clearly why my governor, Andrew Cuomo, who, who you know, now is like you know at the at the bottom of a log flume of scandal <laughs> uh, was held up as the uh, you know as, as, as the great hope for America. The the far worse possibility that I fear may be the case is that this is a dress rehearsal, and that progressives have learned that if they can just point to a scary boogeyman in the closet, 
the American people will gladly hand over their constitutional rights. So I think what people can do is people can understand that there is absolutely nothing in the Constitution that says if there's a pandemic, your rights get suspended. The, the founders knew about pandemics. They knew about pandemics far worse than this one. Right. They didn't write an exception. So I, I, I think the best thing that people can do as individuals is to understand that and to jealously, you know, guard their rights, you know, know what they are and, and celebrate them. David Marcus from The Federalist. You guys can follow him at Blue Box Dave. Thank you so much for joining us, David. We're going to read your full piece on the other side. It's really awesome. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Grace. All right, guys, the week, this week is the week you've all been waiting for. My friends at Eden Pure have brought back the ever so popular Thunderstorm Air Purifier BOGO offer. That's buy one, get one free. The offer expires Sunday, February 28th at midnight. I always say this. It's like Cinderella at midnight. The thunderstorm will turn into a pumpkin. I'm holding it up right now for the um, for the cameras. You guys really want to check these out. Over 60,000 sold The thunderstorm is slated to sell out, so take advantage of this offer while supplies last. If you bought one and you love it, you're going to want two. I have two in my house, and they are very easy to move around, but having two is just nice because you can put one in the kitchen, and then you can use the other one to move around the house. Keeps everything fresh and clean. Jared likes it for his comic book room. I do, and it doesn't eliminate odors like a lot of air fresheners that you'll hear about. This actually changes the air it cleans the air and it's amazing because it does it without a filter it's not loud it just ionizes everything and the air is fresh and if dr fochi wants you to be in the house for the next 20 years you may as well have a fresh air in the house right but i think you bring up a good point jerry because a lot of people hear this and they might think it smells like you know covering up something with flowers or perfume this is this is the absence of smell it smells like fresh clean after a rainstorm so it's not going to smell like perfumey or anything like that um the thunderstorm is below a hundred dollars and doesn't take up any room so take advantage of this bogo offer before it expires this sunday or before supplies run out i'm going to give this to you guys nice and slow go to edenpure.com put in code word grace bogo that's edenpure.com grace bogo shipping is free i'm sure that segment with david marcus got a lot of you guys riled up 844-500-4242 we'll be taking calls all throughout the next hour um, until two o'clock when i have another guest so don't go anywhere this is the grace curly show